thugs, rock and roll. The crowd seems to love this. Careful, it's slippery. I had it wet. Exclusively on Tucson's new run, 92.1 KFMA, Green Valley, Tucson. K292 CM, Summer Haven. Online may contain sexually oriented content. Listener discretion advised. Now, here's Loveline. 1-800-LOVE-191. With Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. Are you insane? Hey, it's Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is a board-certified physician and addiction medicine specialist. Phone number 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number 310-854-4455. We're in New York tonight. Everyone else is back in L.A., meaning the Loveline crew. We're out here doing a little work, and we're sitting in the Westwood One studio out in uh, New York on Broadway. And, you know, the thing about New York is there's a lot of people, and they're on the street, and they're going places. Day and night. Day and night. And the thing that I realized is I usually don't like to see people on the street. Right. Because in L.A., that means something. Right. You're yeah. walking. If they're not in their car, they're, what are they up to? You're pushing a cart. Yeah. You're selling some crack. You're asking someone if they want a date. You're putting a shiv in someone's side. Sure, you're you're like a, a barker for uh, the titty bar. There's something going on when you're on the street in L.A. Yep. And you're a certain kind of person that walks in L.A. because uh, you don't have the means. Uh, you can't afford the car, the insurance, whatever it is. Here, it's always kind of amazing because there's sort of wealthy, good-looking people in nice suits, and they're walking. <laughs> Isn't that, yeah. that kind of an interesting experience? Yeah, lots of them like that. These are well-to-do guys with tassels on their shoes and uh, pomade in their hair and carrying an attache case, and they're just walking next to the homeless guy. Yeah. So nice. Lots of them. All right. Real Big Fish is going to come in here on uh, Wednesday. We were on uh, Howie Mandel today, Drew. Remember I told you three times yeah, last on night? On my dinner, it said Tuesday, but you're right. I saw it today, too. Really? Yeah. Check asses. So we're both right. And tomorrow, you can find us on The View. I know they're right in our demo. <laughs> and many of our listeners tape that show when they're at work at the video store. <laughs> so uh, just being in the same room with... Uh, I was going to say Barbara Mandrell. Barbara Walters. Barbara Walters. She may not, she's not always on that show. No, she won't be there for us. Not for us. We're no Mel Gibson. No. All right. Well, we know what the plan is, so let's execute it. All right. You ready to get started yeah, here? Jamie's our first call. Jamie, what's going on there? Jamie, um, you're 18. Yeah. Excuse me? Go ahead. Um, okay. I'm 18, and um, I have a regular period, so I have an appointment to go to the gynecologist, and I'm pretty sure they're going to want a pap smear. Sure. And I don't want my mom to find out that um, I'm sexually active. What, how would she find that out? Anything that goes on yeah, between you and your doctor. Can't she hold the smear up to the light and see something? <laughs> Whatever goes on between you and your doctor is categorically confidential. If that doctor leaks one word of it to your your uh, anybody, he's, he's guilty. He's broken a law. After what age? 14, actually. Really? Most states, yeah. But 18 is, I mean, let's be clear about this. Uh, you know, there, they, there could be some confusion about is a 14 year old a danger to themselves if they're doing stuff. But an 18 year old, this is your business. That's it. Okay. And uh, well, what if she asks him? What if the mother confronts the doctor? What you say, I've been confronted many times. Like, oh, you have? Oh, all the time. And what you say is, uh, I'm sorry, I, I, until I'm specifically instructed to talk about her case. Uh, she has a right to complete confidentiality. Uh, let me explain how it really goes. Uh, Drew, how's uh, my daughter's Tammy? Uh, how's that pap smear looking? I don't know. My memory's not so good. <laughs> and then the guy opens his billfold and he peels off a 20. And Drew goes, yeah, geez, where did I put that thing? And he peels off another 20 and he says, uh, herpes. Why are you so afraid, Jamie? Um, I would like to call my mom. But not in that. I won't. I don't want her to find out in that way. Find out what? That I'm sexually active. Okay. Well, it's important that you, if you are sexually active. It's, it's really important that you get a pap. So it's great that you're going in. Okay. Okay. You using right. protection? Yes. What are you doing? Always. What are you using? Condom. What are you using? Condom. Condom. Okay. All, All right. right. Okay. Keep Thanks. using it. All right. All righty. Good Blaine luck with that. Blaine is next. What line's Blaine on? Two. Blaine. Hey, how's it going, on? Good. What's uh, the deal? Uh, I got a question. Hey, Drew. Uh, huh? Let me ask you something. Be quiet there for a second, Blaine. I know we're in New York and everyone else is in L.A. and we're sort of patching things around. 
And sometimes we hear a little echo in our headset and that kind of thing. I don't think the callers hear anything. No. Is it like they're screwing with us? No, it's a little delay. Is that what it is? Yeah. All right, Blaine. Yeah. Uh, What's going on? All right, well, uh, a couple of days ago, well, actually a Saturday night, uh, <clears throat> I had sex with uh, my cousin's wife, and uh, she wants to do it again. Oh, no. She's like, How old is your cousin? Huh? How old How, is your cousin? How old is my cousin? 19. How old is his wife? 20. Why were you? Why did you do something like that? Because um, uh, she wanted to. Do you hate your cousin? Huh? Do you hate uh, your cousin? I'm a cousin's wife. But do you hate your cousin? Huh? No, do I hate my cousin? Well, don't you think this is going to affect him in a rather negative way? Uh, well, I was kind of hoping he wouldn't find out. <laughs> yeah, but you still must really at least not respect your cousin, Blaine. No. Why is that? Oh, boy. I believe nah. Blaine could have done this. <laughs> no, no, I mean, like, I know where you're coming from, but... Hey, Blaine, let me ask you something seriously. Yeah, go ahead. How would you like it if the rest of the world just sort of adopted your attitude? Yeah. You know, like when you ran out of gas on the side of the road and people just pull over, take your wallet, spit on you, and drive away and say, and this isn't even family, by the way. That's your, uh, your cousin bangs your wife in a few years. Okay, as she wanted to. People in general just uh, come up to the front lawn take away the uh, take the sprinkler key whatever patio furniture is not bolted down is, is that the kind of world you want to live in no not really I mean some, somebody would eventually do that to you too oh, believe like, me I mean, at least that will get through to him huh? yeah all right so why don't you not do it again why wouldn't I oh boy I don't know this guy is why an not? asshole I don't know if she's already right. talking about leaving him to be with me, but, like, they got a kid together. And oh, for crying out loud, Blaine. Let, let that family alone. <laughs> how would you... How, it's not funny. It's not funny. Well, I think he's just me. screwing with us. What? She likes me, though, you know. All right, well, so you know there's something wrong with her, right? She has a kid. Yeah. She's, mo she's a mother. Yeah. She, she has a responsibility to that child. Yeah. Does she hate her husband? Mm, I don't think so. Evidently, she don't like him just a whole lot. All right, but Blaine, obviously somebody screwed with you growing up, but th that doesn't mean the world becomes your screw with cam canvas now that you're 16 and your dick gets hard. Just knock it off. Find Jesus Christ, would you? I rarely <laughs> recommend that to somebody, but in Blaine's case, I think it'd be nice. But I mean, that's going to hurt her feelings. I mean, forget about her feelings. She's got a kid and she's married. Just go find some dizzy little 15-year-old and knock her up and ruin your life. I'm trying a little reverse psychology. Sure, I certainly stay out of his Get a life. job at a welding shop and call it a life. I mean, you can't even talk to Blaine. You can't even talk to him. No, you can't. This Blaine, scary. don't have any kids. For Ever. Christ's sake. Please. Oh, my God. Okay, Tim's the next on line seven. I'm speaking of the mic, Drew. Yeah, Really? Yeah. I wonder if the direction of this thing is off. Well, we, was... we got these weird mics. They're the kind that hang in the middle of the ring in yeah. a boxing mat. Right. And some guys use these things, but I can't figure out why anyone would use one of these mics. They hang down in front of you. It's like speaking to a, a horse's sh sh schlong. <laughs> It's it's like you're blowing a horse. Tim. You can't see what I can't see the doing? screen. The mic's in front of my face. What's going on, Tim? Oh, How are you doing? Well, actually, good. I good. I called last night, and you guys called me back tonight um, about the skinhead thing and the non-racist skinhead. Um, right. Yeah, uh, skinhead actually originally started out in the '60s in England. They're out in Liverpool, but they weren't they weren't racist then. They were. Um, it was like poor middle class people, and they were anti hippies then. And when they came so, over here, that's when they, they got hooked up with the Aryans and all that stuff. Um, that was a re reaction to the hippies. I mean, if the hippies got long hair, we'll just shave our heads. Right. Yeah, that's it. And it was an excuse to go out and get in fights with people over there. All right, but the the swastika was some old Indian sign. That doesn't mean anything now. No. Do you know what I'm saying? Well, it's still it's still well it's still used by by skinheads as a as a as a racist thing. You know, I mean, as a swastika, it's not an Indian cross. Well, well, what all I'm using, I, I know it's sort of we're crossing roads here, but what I'm saying is, is just because something started out is something okay, doesn't mean what it is now is good. 
No, and, and am I were, making sense? Yes. Yeah. yeah. They weren't good then, you know. I mean, they were just they were, but they had different beliefs. And then what happened is, is they just kind of branched off, and and these these other guys, the the sharps, and and um, actually some vegans, kind of take that anti racist approach to being a skinhead i'm not i'm not for skinheads or anything i just you know i, I my background's in and department of corrections and, and gangs and stuff like that and it's just oh really you guys talking about that yeah okay. where, where are you calling from what city well, i'm in seattle right now how's the gang situation in seattle well it's kind of you know it's seattle's kind of a it actually got a lot of gangs in it um we were the first ones the first franchise gang was in Seattle uh, back in 88, I think it was, that the Crips came up here and opened up a crack house, and it was a franchise deal. Yeah. Uh, I, I think I invested in that. Lost my shirt. <laughs> Those goddamn Crips, they don't keep books, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So Seattle, Seattle's got a gang problem. They're working on it, though. So, um, the city is. But the other thing is, you were talking to somebody about methadone last night, and 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 Drew Drew was saying that it's really a bad thing, and I and I agree with him. You know that that methadone maintenance that was the thing that started was started by insurance companies. And well, that, it's it, I I really don't believe it was anything sinister in the methadone uh, attempt. You know to treat opiate addiction with the methadone, but. But as a matter of fact, and certainly within my clinical experience, methadone has been a nightmare. So yeah. I, I would only recommend it to people that cannot, for whom it is impossible to successfully uh, participate in treatment. Oh, All right, I, Tim. I, I, I agree Thank with you. I, I've seen people that did heroin for three weeks and methadone for three years, you know. And, oh, yeah. yeah. And it's, yeah. it's a nightmare. But it was mm -hmm. actually back in the 50s, they did a sweep in New York City, you know, of burglars. <laughs> actually, all the heroin addicts out of one neighborhood. And the burglaries dropped like ninety percent. So the well, whole insurance company said, "Well, wait a minute. You know, what can we do? You know, we can't give them heroin, but what can we give them?" And methadone was the thing that they came up with. And that there we go. Tim, pardon? Tim, what do you? What do you? Well, I know you may not have the statistics in front of you, but how much of crime is drug related? Well, I, I up until a month and a half ago, I was a chemical dependency counselor in a prison. So, um, where I was at, it was about ninety-seven percent was drug related. Isn't that amazing? In terms of crimes being committed to get money for drugs, or just crimes about drugs? Well, crimes being committed to get money for drugs, or crimes being committed well under the influence of drugs, or, or going through withdrawals from drugs. Um, right. About 97 percent of the guy, 97 percent of the people that were in the prison that I worked at were chemically dependent. Yeah, you know, they, have, they have one drug of choice or another. Right. Um, but they all smoke cigarettes, right? Not all of them. Actually, smoking pot was probably more common than smoking cigarettes. And did people commit as much crimes off pot as they did off booze? Adam, is this Adam? Because I can't yeah. hear you real well over the cell phone. But yeah, I, I, Adam, I, marijuana is probably the most evil drug out there that I can think of right now. As far as as far as that, because it's the only drug that when somebody's got a problem with it, they'll argue with you and say no. Nah. Oh man, will they? Isn't that amazing, Tim? I do yeah. that every day. It's just, it's so insidious, and the culture doesn't. It, I go on television shows and talk shows and stuff, and people attack me for insinuating that God forbid the marijuana is addictive. It's profoundly addictive for some people. I, I know it is, but. Why don't we just legalize the crap? Uh, the stoners can put a plant in their backyard of their mom's house, by the way. Because they don't got their own pad. But when mom kicks off, they'll move in there. The mortgage will be paid and everything. And they can just smoke their pot and watch uh, Beavis and Butthead until their head explodes. They don't need them out on the street stealing car stereos. Yeah, well. That's the point. Here's what, here's what the current drug laws do is they take drugs and drug addicts and they bring them to us. Making criminals. Hey, they wouldn't come our way, if you think about it. I yeah, mean... That depends on the drug. Well, okay, but here's what I'm saying. When you're... When you got a, a habit, especially a heroin habit, you need money for heroin, you need money. And That's you right. can't hold down a job... That's right. And so you go to places you wouldn't normally go to to get some money. That's right. And that's to your house while you're at work. That's right. Or even worse, when you're coming home from work. That's right. Let's go to Jack next. Jack, Jack is 16. Jack, what's going on there? 
Hey, um, I have two questions, but uh, first of all, I just want to say you guys are like my heroes as musicians. Oh boy. My goal is to one day be a guest in your show because you guys are like so cool. But, uh, Hurry. <laughs> I've learned more from you guys than I could like ever learn in school. Oh, wow. Thanks. I want to say hi to Meredith. And, uh, do you guys have Wing and Ding from Bobcat Goldthwait's Big Guy show on like a few weeks ago? On TV? Uh, I don't know. I think it was a radio show. We had them on both. Oh, yeah, because I was talking to one of them at like some party in Hollywood Saturday night, and I knew I knew her from somewhere, but I couldn't figure out where. And last night, it just hit me. And that's we, had, we didn't have Wing and Ding on the radio, did we? Yeah, that was the first time I met them. Yeah. Where yeah, the hell was, was I? The light-haired one. There. Uh, what? With Bobcat. Oh, all right. Man, I must have been confused. And, and we had him on the TV, too. Yeah, yeah. Jack, yeah. you're 16. You're talking to Wing and Ding? <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, my friend Jose is a model. And uh, so he's like, you know, got access to these parties and stuff. And he wanted me to go with him. I mean, a few of my friends went. And she, it was only one of them. I was really nervous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Jack, Jack's, uh, Jack's knees must have been chattering. Yeah. Penis uh, in the middle, like uh, the, the uh, inside of a bell, <laughs> banging back and forth from his right hip to his left hip. I just want to so you didn't you didn't score with wing or ding, did you, Jack? No, dude, I was way too. No, I got a girlfriend. Like, you can't do that. All right, but uh, so um, what's your, what's your question? Yeah, well, I'm in youth and government, and what we do is we make we make bills like that. Uh, we vote together as like as like in our own little wannabe government program. And if any of them get passed, they go to the actual government and they decide if they're going to vote on them. And you, you know how you guys are always talking about how there should be some kind of law to make, like, uh, teenage girls not be able to, like, just have, like, kids, you know, as much as they want, you know, because, you know, people have to pay for that and stuff. I want to know right. any, like, suggestions for a bill that we could, like, write to somehow take wow. care of that. God bless you, Jack. Wow. You, you have, uh, you take shorthand? Yeah, I, I got a uh, notepad out right now. All right. Drew, what do you think? What 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 are the criteria going to be for being Ill, ineligible for uh, giving uh, having children? Yeah. yeah. Well, the, the the first thing is uh, if your eyebrows are screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? The screwball women with the real thin eyebrows that uh, goes up like Corella Deville yeah. and way too much eyeshadow on and it, too much with the eyes, too much eyeliner, too much eyeshadow, too much plucking with the eyebrows. <laughs> you're out. Because that's going to disturb a kid. And uh, that's no mother. Now later on, when you're grandmother like mine, you can you can shave them off and pencil them back in, and that's fine. But uh, the eyebrows a factor. The second thing, and, and more seriously, and this will never pass. But this is what we'd like pass. We'll get to the the softer version of our bill in a second. I would like, I would like us to target trouble zones. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like like um, I hate to compare uh, kids to roaches. But let me just do it for a second. When the exterminator comes in, he looks around and he sees, oh, you got a leaky, you got a leaky pipe down there in the basement. They like the moisture. That's going to track. He puts the roach trap there. Right, right, right. He doesn't necessarily have to see any roaches. He just sees, oh, looks like they're going to get in here. Looks like they're going to congregate there. Go ahead and uh, take a little uh, foam and spray it in this hole here and clog that up. They get in under here. They like it here. They, they know what they like. They nip it in the butt, yep. in other words. Yep. I am all for this. You show me a young girl whose dad is gone, who has had a little abuse from stepdad, who's having difficulty in school, who's acting out, and whose mother gave birth to her when she was 15 mm -hmm. or 16. I went to Norplant and her. Because, as we know, Drew, she's about 7,000 times more likely to give birth yeah. than somebody from a different environment. That's true. In a better environment. That's true. Now, I'd like to give her the Norplant first before she has the first kid. Now, the way our government works... Even after the first kid, we won't we won't get involved. Yeah. Meanwhile, I can't put the kitchen on top of my garage, and it's not my third one either. I can't get started. In other words, I got to pull a thousand permits and grease a hundred palms before I can build the goddamn kitchen on top of my garage. But you can you can be on your eighth kid, and we're not going to say a word to you. Why don't why not legislate some sort of test or some sort of a criteria? You know what I mean? Exactly. Some sort of test you have to pass or some. Something. Before what, though? If you're pregnant, you're allowed to... I don't know. All right. Here's the more sensible. Here's the more sensible nor one, Norplant for people at risk. Okay. Yeah, but he, he's never going to be able to pass a thing that gets people Norplant before they're yeah. pregnant. If in you have a kid 
if in you're not married or you're using the state in any way, at any age, you get the NOR plan. Forget about what age you are. I don't care if you're 16 or 86. If you have a kid and you're currently getting help, whether it's welfare or um, SSI or what the hell else do you get there, Drew? Whatever it is, yeah. Whatever it is from Uncle General, Sam. General Relief, food stamps. With the first check, you get the NOR plan. Otherwise... No check. No check. No one's forcing you to take the NOR plan. Why this is outrageous, cruel, inhumane, and unfair and Stalin-esque to people I'll never understand. When you put your hand out... There's a price. There's a price. I mean, Stop having kids. Or, do, or bring your hand back. Yeah. Either way. You know, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like uh, when I work construction and I'd go to someone's house, I wouldn't go, hey, how about you pay me and I don't do a goddamn thing? Oh, you're not going to pay me? This is an outrage. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm offended. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get on the phone with uh, to my local bleeding heart left wing uh, liberal and uh, have him uh, plan a uh, hunger protest over you not getting paid for building the deck. No, I got a choice. I build the deck, you pay me. I don't want to build the deck, you don't pay me. And I wouldn't expect anything different. And there's no aspect of life that is different than that, except for this. Should we, should we, well, it maintains the government. Everything is different, of course. Okay, it's you have special case. You have one kid. How about if you have no kids and you're on general relief? Uh, you have no kids, but you're on like uh, welfare, and you're under eighteen. You get the nor plan. Yeah, uh, whatever age you are, unless you can prove you're a lesbian. Is it? <laughs> you have to have documentation you're a lesbian. You know how we do that? We take them down to the driving range. <laughs> But it's a little discriminatory if to women. They can come within ten yards of how, that how, flag how, out there at one forty-five with a bucket can of hold balls. Men accountable in some way. Can we keep some consequences going for men who have the child? Make yeah. them pay in some way or go to jail. Yeah, you know what I mean. Right. So your child, you pay a certain amount or jail. You have a yeah. You have a kid. You have to feed the general kitty. I mean, even if you're not taking care of your kid, you got to put 200 bucks in a month toward the general kitty. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. General kid relief. Right. The kitty, the kitty fund. Kitty relief. Yeah. You got to feed that into the hopper because believe me, your kid's sucking, sucking off the teat of uh, Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam needs some of them teats. But the point is it needs to be, people will always follow the path of least resistance. Now, these things may sound outrageous, but the fact is we have to find ways of of crafting behavior, of changing behavior, of molding people, or they'll keep running gone. Well, uh, when you have people that obviously don't play by the rules and don't understand structure, you're forced to bring structure upon them. Yep. And that's what prisons are. Yeah. You hope that people wouldn't go into liquor stores and shoot the owners, but once in a while someone does, and then we have to force structure on them. It's, it's that way with... Uh, many aspects of life why should this be different okay that's what you put in your bill you can also put it in your pipe and then smoke it it's a cliche that i'd like to bring back all right we're going to take ourselves a little break we'll be back with more love line love line be right back in a minute Yeah, what's up? Uh, this is the latest man, and uh, you're listening to The Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Uh, Drew. <clears throat> yes, you is. Phone number for Love Line, 1-800-LOVE-191. Fax number, 310-854-4455. We got new microphones in here. Much better. We're ready to party. Isn't yeah, this better? Much better. Yeah, it's like instead of getting underneath the horse, it's as if the horse had flipped over oh. and you're approaching his penis that ah. way. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you climbed on top of it, but it was on its back. All right. All righty then. We're in uh, New York. Mike, Sherry, and producer Ann are back in L.A. You know, uh, best pizza in the world here. Well, maybe Chicago. But uh, not the smoothie capital of the world. Quick tip for the Loveline Travelers. You're coming out to New York, stay away from the smoothies. What happened? Well, uh, you know, for, first off, it's, it's funny how uh, a ambitious you are, but uh, sort of from a dietary standpoint, but when the but the reality sets in, Drew, Drew's eating right now, by the way. Yeah. It's uh, three in the morning here. But you know what I'm saying? Like I said to myself, we're traveling. 
we're going to be eating, we're going to be having a good time, and here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take it easy during the day, and then at night, I'm right. really going to enjoy myself. Because right. we're going out, we're having meals with people, other people are paying, we're going to beautiful restaurants. You don't want to hold back then. But just take it easy during the day, and see if you can't jog around the block once. So I headed out of the hotel this morning, and I said, uh, you know what I'm going to do? I'll get myself a smoothie, and that'll hold me over until this evening. Unfortunately, I passed the pizza place looking for the smoothie thing, uh -huh. slid right in, and uh, had it. it. For some reason, it's better by the slice. And they don't really have much of that in L.A. No. Just beautiful, big triangles. It's like a, a cheese-covered vagina. Okay. It's fantastic. It's huge. And, you know, I like the triangle shape because it reminds me of pie. Pizza pie. Uh, Pie's right in the word there. I see. It is spectacular. And... In L.A., everyone, the, the crust is too thick. And listen, all you idiots who like the thick crust, there's something wrong with you. That, to me... It's not pizza. It's a, it's it's not pizza. And it's a sign uh, you're a little unstable mentally. And that's funny. Why? It's low... I, it, it equals low IQ. Here's the two ways I can judge someone's mentality. Do you like Woody Allen? And do you like thick crust or thin, thin crust? And how do you say vagina? And do you say... Uh, how many R's in vagina? <laughs> you said it. I was just making an example. But anyway, smoothies. Now, the food's real good here because everyone's ethnic and everyone cooks, and that's good. But you need people from Venice Beach to make smoothies. <laughs> you need chicks named Don with blonde hair and guys named Sunshine or Happy. You know what I mean? You need that white hippie guy. Yeah. And you can't have the Armenian guy making you a smoothie. Right. Because uh, this smoothie I got was tap water, and he threw a couple Skittles in there, and then uh, threw it in the blender, uh, and like squeezed a little a little man. banana syrup. Uh. <laughs> and yeah, he, he hacked up a Starburst and spit that into the cup, and that was a smoothie. And God knows what was in that protein powder, but uh, it took him a while to produce. It. Uh, they don't right. have the Jamba Juice out here, do they? No, kind of miss that. All right, we're ready to go here, Drew. Who are we yeah, speaking to? James. Clint. James. James is fourteen. Oh, James. Yeah. Hello? What's going on with you, James? Um, well, I had kind of this problem that's mainly for Drew, and I'm sure you have some comments too, but, um. What's up? I was with my girlfriend Saturday night, and we've been together for like a year and a half, and we're pretty close, and, well, we were like, you know, getting pretty heated, and she asked me to, like, have sex with her, but I didn't want to because, you know, I didn't have a con or whatever. How old and is she? She's 14, mm -hmm. and, uh, she asked me just like just to go in her once, and I said, "Sure, fine, you know, I didn't see any problem with that." And I did, and I was like pre-ejaculating like a little bit. And you could tell, huh? You could tell. Yeah, just a little bit. Right. It wasn't like well, a lot. That and fluid, it turns out, it oftentimes is very concentrated in sperm. I'm sorry. Yeah, but it takes like a quart of that to get someone pregnant. No, no it doesn't. No. no, but it was just a little bit. Just a little bit, little dabble, do you? But um, anyway, and. I was maybe in for about a three seconds, and she was on her period for, like, her second day, and now she's saying that she's, like, her period has totally stopped, and she said it might be because she's stressing out so much about it, but I don't know. She's, like, we're both really worried, like, maybe... She's well, it's, un it's unlikely. Yeah, it's on her period. It's unlikely, but you do need to take a test in two weeks, uh -huh. okay? All right. Two weeks after the contact, I, I think you should settle down about it. And I, did, I think you're right. It's probably that she's stressing out. Sometimes just being anxious is enough to make a woman delay her period or change her period. Yeah. And she said, it sounds she like she's said. kind of stressed out. Aren't you guys kind of young to be doing this kind of thing? doesn't sound like either of you are really quite ready for this yet. Yeah, it's what, what I didn't think. But, you know, I mean, I was, it was there, so. Yeah. One of and what 14-year-old guy? And listen, ladies. You are the uh, ring keepers. Unfortunately, that's true. Yeah. I mean, you can't invite a guy in that way. 14, has had a boner for the last uh, three and a half years. He's a, his, his penis is leaking something. But just stay in for a little bit. A guy can't say no to that. He should. Oh, but, yeah. uh, not at 14. No. Uh, not at 28. No. No. I do the 56 one, but I can't do the math. Oh. All right, James, be a little more responsible. Clint is next. Clint, what's going on? Uh, but wait, let me say this. Drew, when two people have been going out for a year, yeah. and let me give you this tip. Huh. When your kids start dating, yeah. it's 
especially your daughter, and either one of them, actually, or any of the three of them, if they're 13 years old and they've been seeing someone for six or eight months or a year, break it up. Yeah, that's right. Because you're saying to James, well, aren't you a little bit young to be doing that at 14? But they've been going out for a year. Yeah, something's going to happen. Oh, and there's, things are developing. Either that or have, like, are flowing. surveillance cameras. Oh, what are you going to say? With alarms. To, I say, Jim, James and your girlfriend, why don't you give it another three years? Uh, you two together? Are you kidding me? Is making out the way they are? Uh, no possible way. Uh, I mean, something's going to happen, right? Well, you're thinking like a guy. I mean, women can, can hold things off a little bit. But yeah, but not if a, if a girl be difficult for is hooked up with a guy at she 13. Really cares about it. Yeah. And she yeah. really cares about it. And, you know, she thinks they're getting married. Yeah, yeah. Now you're 14 and a half. You've been going out for a year and a half, which is a lifetime. Yeah. When you're 13, 14 years old, hey, you're ready to have sex. Oh boy. All right. Well, just another tip for you. You're not. Trust me. Who are we talking to? Clint. Clint, Clint is 23. Hey guys, how's it going? Good. Good. I was uh, listening to your call where you're telling the guy about requiring Norplant for people who are uh, on government assistance, and I have an alternative. Uh, you were saying that prison is about providing structure to people that need it. Well, I also think it's about rehabilitation. Sure. Instead, why not require people who have had a kid, who are at risk, to uh, to go to, like, weekly classes like AA meetings, give them education, you know? Well, because it requires tremendous motivation. I mean, I can tell you from somebody who treat addicts, even the, the, the setting, the case of addiction, even addicts that desperately want to get better, it's exceedingly difficult. If somebody is forcing somebody to go to classes... They won't do crap. Plus, that's a lot of resources. We got to get the gym at the Y on a Tuesday night. We got to have Ed Begley Jr. come in and speak to them every once in a while. We, we, we're beyond that in our society right now. We need consequences. We need them. We need forces. We need I mean, uh, all, all we do is way. beg people to act like human beings. That's all we do in our society. Could you please act like a goddamn human being for just a couple of years so we could get on with society? But they won't do it. I I don't mind the parenting class thing. I think that's a great idea. They can they can get their nor plant at the parenting class. Sure. I mean, well, I think that's, that's a good be... idea. But asking to go with just the nor plant, you know, I mean, Hitler had ideas like that, and he's no longer in power, and there's good reasons for that. You're asking too much. It's not going to happen. It's totally unrealistic. So start with something decent. You know, just throw some money. Yeah, but here, here, Clint. Hey, Clint. We're not politicians. Yeah, we're too smart for, to be politicians, and we don't get enough oral sex. But this, the, Drew's way too dedicated to his wife to be a politician. But, he, but you're not. Is she listening? No. Well, I am kind of dedicated to Drew's wife, but I, I think I know what you meant. Clint, here's the here's the deal. The guy wanted to. The guy had a question. We gave him our answer and our version. I understand what you're saying is right, but you could no sooner get people to go. To class, to parenting classes, then you could. Get, that's just as far out as the nor plant, and wouldn't necessarily have the immediate impact that I'm looking for. I want these kids to not have another kid, so let's give them the nor plant. And to tell you the truth, I don't think they would object that much. Right. I think Jesse Jackson would probably go nuts, and Edward James almost uh, would go nuts, and uh, all the other uh, liberal politicians would go nuts. But I don't think. The kids would mind because, hey, if you're 16 and you got an eight month old and you're horny, there you go. Screw away. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. Um, and remember that uh, that Barbara, what's her name in Orange County that had the program for giving birth control? Barbara Harris giving birth control to mothers who had on crack and had difficulty stopping and right. having kids. And they, they were seeking it out and they paid them to do it. We, we could do the other route. And actually just pay people to do the right thing as opposed to withhold things. And maybe people would be a little more on board then. Right. And we don't like the way that sounds as a society. Pay uh, some young, crazy 16-year-old chick uh, 200 bucks to get the nor plant. But believe me, how much does it cost for her to have the kid over at the county hospital? Mm. Is it five grand? Mm -hmm. Huh? Possibly. And the 200 is gone her first 10 minutes in the waiting room, right? Yeah. Well, let's give her the 200. Whatever makes sense. That's all we want. Unless it pertains to me. I get to do whatever I want. What? That's, uh, that's, uh, what you get when you're in power. All you, right, let's... You know, that, but that's the way our government now does work. And there's such arrogance of power there. It's just unbelievable. I know. 
They well, know what's right. You behave. And listen, by the way, speaking of that, uh, you know, we got elections coming up pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, it's all over the country, right? Yeah. Uh, here's how you vote. Whatever you see the least commercials for, that's <laughs> what you vote for. Whatever candidate, whatever proposition. The more commercials you see, just listen, just think no every time you hear yes. Or yes every time you hear no. Just go 180 degrees on whatever you're bombarded with, and that's it. Except for the Indian gaming thing, because they're coming. The Indians are doing lots of commercials, and so are those Nevada casino ones. I have no idea how to vote on that. I'll figure that out. All right, let's sell a call, and then we'll go to break here. Uh, let's see here. Mm. Okay. Four, cool. Jason. Jason, you're 24. What's going on? Well, uh, I was calling. First of all, I, I listen to you guys so a lot, and I think you guys do a lot of good. Um, I I was calling because uh, I I had a situation. I'm divorced now, but uh, there was a time where my wife wanted to sleep with my brother, and uh, she was like trying to work out a thing where we'd kind of like find somebody that we wanted to be with, and then. Um, and and sleep with him. Well, she ended right. up getting with my brother. And Jason, hold on a second. Hold on. We're gonna go to break, but it, we're gonna do some gambling on on the the woman, New York style. Right. Absolutely, because yeah. something is up with her ass. Oh yeah. All right. So Jason, you hang on. Uh, Drew, you run down to the ATM. Well, it's hard. We, I don't get the same sense of you know instinct when I don't have the actual person. So it's gonna yeah, be a wild guess. I'm going. We'll go secondhand gambling right. here. Right. She wanted to sleep the guy's brother. I know. And was very verbal about it. Yeah. All right. We're gonna take a break. We'll come back with some gambling on Jason's ex-wife after this. Love line. Matt and Crowland. Doctor Drew. The phone number is one eight hundred love one nine one. We'll be right back. Hey there, it's the Love Line. Adam Carolla, Dr. Drew, phone number 1 800 L V E 191. Oh, brought a little of that New York pizza up. Take that garlic powder and dump it all over it. Did you really? Every time. That's disgusting. I know you'd be gassy if you did that, Drew. More than gassy, I think I'd explode. To me, I'm gassy, honest. not a bad thing. That's <laughs> no, a plus. Know. You know, know what I mean? You're like, it's a. Something you're very proud of. It's win win. You get the wind wind. <laughs> it's win break wind. Yeah, you get the garlic flavor and you get the garlic gas. Ugh. All righty. When we left off on Love Line, Jason. We're speaking of Jason. Jason's uh, 24. He allowed his wife to sleep with his brother. His uh, wife had been lobbying to do that for some time. They finally agreed on it. And to me, that smacks of something horribly wrong with not only Jason, but his wife, especially since she was the one doing the sleeping. But, uh, boy, Jason, who sounds sort of sane, has to have a screw loose himself. To have been with her. So, who do you want to gamble on? Jason? Or the wife. Or the wife. Uh, but maybe, he, yeah, the wife. Is Jason, are you there, Jason? Yeah, I'm here. Hello? Now, do, you, do you have some information? Now, don't give us any, but... You know about your wife's past? A little bit. Um, a little bit? Well, I'm, I'm slowly... Well, don't, wait, wait, wait. Don't tell us. We're, we're going to try to... Remember the uh, don't tell us part? <laughs> Do you, uh, but you know her family? You know her past, her upbringing, that kind of thing? Yes, I do. Thank you me. do? Okay. All right. Well, hang on a second there, Jason. Yeah, let's let the gambling begin. Go ahead. <sighs> Total chaos. Yeah. And uh, sort of bizarre chaos. I mean, cheating is, is yeah, angry, one thing, but uh, really wanting to sleep with the brother. And just obsessing about it and making it happen. And is is like almost aggressive. Yeah, it's aggressive. Oh, I hope they don't have any kids these two. Um, uh, should we just go Second with this is, sexual abuse? Yeah, go with that bet. I'm going to go. The other bet is that the parents... By her brother. Mm. Ooh, -hoo. could be, but uh, ah. the other bet is that that uh, the parents were like overt with their sexuality; like they'd have sex in front of their kids, and they they would sort of traumatize the kids with with hippie sex. parents, kind of hippie parents, exactly. Ooh. Okay, why don't you you want to go the hippie round? I'll go the sex yeah. abuse yeah. round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Jason. Yeah. yeah. What went on in her past? Um, 
Uh, from what I understand, uh, she was molested oh, by her there father. You go. All right. Found yeah. this out kind Hang of on, Hold on. Let me collect my two bucks. Yeah. That's tip money. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm a big tipper here in New York. She was molested by grandfather? Yeah, that's from what I understand, yes. Um, what was her family like, her upbringing, parents? Um, her mom was very promiscuous. She actually, uh -uh. during our marriage, she, she caught her mom a couple of times at places where she wasn't supposed to be. Did she ever witness this when she was a kid? Yeah. Ooh, ooh, the, the dollar's crawling right out of my wallet. I was. Come on, Jason. You're killing me, buddy. Yeah, but. <clears throat> all right, all right, all right. So, even though it wasn't the hippie parents who sort of walked around uh, wearing nothing but the Panama hat and uh, sucking on like a wheatgrass knee high and talking about free love, yeah. she still witnessed mm, parents that were. Sexual and a little out of control. Yep. Trump and I'll give Trump you a buck back, you, you bastard. All right, so, Jason? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, why, why'd you marry her? Well, I mean, and why'd you let her have sex with your brother? And what's up with you? And your brother. And what's up with your brother? Oh, well, yeah, I, I don't know. He, he kind of, it was like more of a we talked him into it kind of thing. Um, oh. At the time, she was. Imagine that conversation. Huh? Oh, here's a good one. I can imagine my sister. Hey, I'd like you to blow my German husband, Kristoff. Uh, hold on, give me another beer. <laughs> hold still, you precise bastard. All right, so, uh, Jason, but what kind of family do you and your brother come from? Uh, it was kind of my kind of the same kind of situation. My mom uh, was kind of stepping out my my dad for a long time, and then after twelve years, they got a divorce. And uh, it kind of got real ugly after that. And our whole family kind of split up for a long time. I mean, my, my, me and my brother um, hadn't talked in like a long time. And then we started talking and stuff. And this, this all came up like during that time that we started talking to each other again. And I don't know. I, my, my other brother uh, ended up, he ended up committing suicide um, oh, about a yeah. year ago. The same brother that no, my other brother, my my other brother. the other brother. Yeah, Very I have awesome. I have a, a my second oldest and then the youngest are uh, my brothers. My mm. the one that was closest to me, he's the one who took it, who uh, committed suicide. Okay. All right. So things are kind of a, a mess. Yeah. And do you have any? Do you have any kids? Yes, I do. I have two, oh. two boys. Oh. 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 See. Oh. That, you, uh, the Norplant plan. Yes. I could have singled her out as a prime candidate long before. Yeah. Long before I could have fed her that Norplant. Yeah. Uh, molested by grandpa. My mom's out of control. Norplant. Norplant. 14. I don't know. It's a crazy plan. All right. So what are you doing with your kids, Jason? Well, we're right now we're divorced and we got kind of split in the custody with my boys. And I'm just kind of focusing my life on my kids right now. Because I found out just how, how far my wife would go, you know, to to try and destroy my life. I mean, I mean, well, I, I understand. I probably had something to do with that. That's kind of why I was calling was to find out what what it is, what screws loose in my head to even allow something like that, and then go back and think that oh, it was terrible and I should have never done it, and try and beat myself up for it. All right. Well, here here's the deal, Jason. Let's look at it this way. First off, what's done is done as far as your brother and uh, your wife and uh, the other brother committed suicide. Everything's a mess, but it's it's done. Now, now the reality is you're 24, you got a couple of boys, and you don't want those two boys to really go through what you and your brothers have gone through. Right. And you don't we don't wish that upon anybody. No. And you don't want them knocking up somebody either. It's just you want them to go to college. You want them to be happy, and then later on they can blame you, but not, not for sexual or physical abuse. Just because you know, part of being happy and adjusted and going to college is blaming your parents for things too, or at least resenting them. So, unfortunately, your ex-wife is crazy, and she has these boys half the time, and that's going to be tough. 
And she sounds like the kind of person that can use them against you, mm -hmm. use them as leverage, mm -hmm. do a lot of acting out. So sort of get them involved in the chaos. And get them involved in the chaos. Is, is she doing any of that, Jason? Yes, she is. Uh, oh. She went for full custody in court, and a lot of this molesting charges came out uh -huh. in court, and that's kind of why I got the 50-50. Um, I don't understand why I, got, why I didn't get the, the full custody, but... Well, because she has to actually chase the kid around the house with a fireplace poker before they're going to oh, take then. it away from the mom. I mean, like 30 laps yeah. before they take it away from Mama, even if Mama's crazy, and give it to you. And by the way, uh, don't take this wrong way, but I'm, I'm guessing you're not living in some palace uh, with a couple of pairs and a, and a butler and a trampoline in the backyard. I mean, you're working, you're 24. Ugh. You may not have the means to take care of them full time. Man. Is that true? Well, I I took care of him for the past four years. My boy, my first son is four, and my my other son is one and a half. And uh, yeah, I, I actually I supported him up until about the last two months of our relationship. And she got a job at a at a nightclub, and that's when a lot of the the problems she she just wasn't coming home. And I was working full time, and then I come home and take care of the kids, and that was causing a lot of the the problems. All right. Well, Jason, Jason sounds like, for what he's been through, decent. he sounds decent like a Jason. decent guy. Decent and it uh, will be your guidance and your sanity. On the kids. And, and listen, everybody, males and females, you hook up with a screwball, someone who's acting out, some poor person that was a victim a few years ago, and they went from victim to victimizer. You hook up with one of these people, and you crank out a couple of kids, and guess what? They got just as much right to them as you do. You understand? I could, uh, if that priest humped Linda Blair while she was chained to the bed and her head was spinning around, she was spewing bile. Uh, nine months later, Linda would have got him four days out of the out of the week. Oh yeah, believe you me. Oh yeah, maybe full custody. That's right. Uh, mama, Mama Demon would be raising him, <laughs> and and that's what you got here. Yeah. So Norplan. No. Terrible idea. Horrible idea. Outlandish. What would happen to society if it would fall apart. women like this well, weren't cranking know, out kids? Like Hitler had ideas like this. Oh, yes. All right. You heard Clint earlier. You're right. It would never work. We'd all just slide off into the ocean. Okay. Well, which one of those kids is going to kill which one of our kids? That's where the betting. That's the real betting that should go on on this show. Crazy mama out whoring around at the nightclubs, uh, banging around with the brother. Got a couple... Couple toddlers in the car. Okay, no more kids. You take care of the ones you got, and we'll be back with more Love Line. I feel so liquidy. Really? Why? Yeah. You're listening to Love Line with Adam Carolla and Dr. Drew. Love Line will be right back. Loveline. We're going to take a little 10 second top of the hour break and we'll be back with more Loveline in actually about 14 seconds. This is Loveline on Radio Station. Hey, it is Loveline. I'm Adam Carolla. That is Dr. Drew. Phone number 1 800 L O V E 191. So, we're out here in New York, and uh, tomorrow we're going to be doing The View, whenever that's on. And uh, today we did Good Morning New York, which uh, meant uh, with the time change, we got back to the hotel about 3.30 and turned in, and it got picked up at 6.30 yeah. <laughs> this morning. Beautiful. And uh, we had to meet the driver down in the lobby at 6.30. So uh, I had a wake-up call in for like 6.10 or something like that, but I never received it. And Drew called me from the lobby. You called me at 6.25, yep. 6.30. What was I doing when I answered the phone? Sleeping. Sleeping. Okay. How long did it take me from sleeping on the 27th floor of this hotel to be in the lobby dressed to do a TV show? Three minutes and 50 seconds. 
And that, that was all it was? Yeah. It's pretty amazing, isn't it? Yeah, it was ridiculous. I was in bed on the 27th floor, sound asleep. I mean, the kind of sleep that you're at when... It's 3 in the morning. It's 3 in the morning. I mean, at least our time. Yeah. And you've been sleeping for just a little over two hours. In the sweater, the loafers, and the press slacks, down in the lobby, ready to rock and roll. Yeah. In under four minutes. And once you actually got on the set, though... I fell asleep when, as soon as we started the show. You had a cup of coffee in your hand. I was swinging around a cup of coffee, and at one point, I just remember the woman, her first question was, um, and you know, these morning shows, it's all about this false sense of energy. Yeah. Hey, we got uh, Kevin O'Brien. Kevin's down there at the Bagel Fest, uh, 99. He's giving out bagels, and he's got... So you go on down there. Stop there. It's off the 114 Turnpike. Honk the horn. Let him know you care. All right. Thanks, Kevin. We're going back this year. Let's check the weather. Woo! It is cold. And I don't know why it is, but th the more tired their audience is, the more they have to overcompensate for the fact that their audience is tired by being wide awake. Yeah. The, yeah. Think about it for giddy, a second. Giddy. giddy. Yeah. Why is it the people who are on TV at 6:45 in the morning are more awake than the people that are on at 5:45 <sighs> in the afternoon? Yeah. It's overcompensation. Yeah. They don't want to be there. They're pumping it up, and they know. Well, they want to wake everybody, get everybody going, proper mood. Well, I don't want to be got going. Yeah. So we were sitting there, and the woman looked at me and said, "Tell us about Love Line. Tell us how that works." <laughs> oh, isn't that sort of her so, question? I can't remember really what's going on. And I went, uh, I'd slept for uh, two hours and 15 minutes, and I looked at her and I went, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't know. Drew, what's it, how does this work? <laughs> Didn't I do that? Basically, yeah. Well, how am I supposed to answer that question? Uh, uh, all right, so uh, we'll be doing that tomorrow on The View. Oh, yeah. Same, oh, same drill. yeah. All right, where are we going with this phone uh, here? Let's go to, let's just go one, two, three. Paul. So, Paul. Uh, hello. Paul's I'm, nine. Yeah, I'm eight, no, I'm nine years old. My wow. Why are you listening to this show? I don't know. I got in. Why aren't you in bed? I am. <laughs> Anyways, um, well, I got interested in this show. I heard about it on MTV. Then uh, one day, I listened to Life 105, and I heard about Love Line. So then I started watching. Watching. All right, good. But, yeah. Fantastic. We'll, we'll breed them. The is, we'll indoctrinate them when they're young. <laughs> yeah. Um, Pro well, problem is. My, well, my problem is my butt itched, and when I felt it, it was like all bumpy. This isn't a joke, real. Really. And well, it's all bumpy. But I took this lotion when it was cured. Then a few days later, it happened again when it was. Then it was cured again. But my problem, but my question is, my question is like, is there like, is that normal? What kind of di is there a disease name for? It? I mean, what is that called? Paul, what's the lotion you're taking? Um, Saint Eyes. It says like vitamin E or something. But I mean, yeah. just what is that? Um, you need a diaper rash, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, you need to see a doctor to see what it is. It's All probably right. some sort of allergic. Okay, reason. Paul? Paul, don't freak. Paul? I think Mama may have walked in the yeah, room or something. Happened. Paul, you gone? Yeah, bye. Oh, oh, there he goes. Mom's there. Well, that's pretty abrupt. Yeah. She said, I don't know how I feel about talking to nine-year-olds, Drew. It's not right. <laughs> no, it's not right. That's not, really not the you, crap anyway. ice blew out. That's right. And all of a sudden, I feel bad. Well, parents must police what kids interact with in the medium. All right, but they got to let them do something better this than... Um, yeah. Hopefully you know, learns. Too much Nintendo. Layla. Oh. Right, so what should you do? Go to the doctor? Yeah, I mean, again, I, it's... it's uh, Finally, the producer of the television show came up to me. I'll tell you this. They come they go, I've noticed something. Skin questions don't work. Like, yeah. I, I, every, every single one, I answer the same way. I can't, really? I can't interpret what people are telling me. That's a breakthrough for TV. That's a, it's a, We're only on our 235th show. I know. Well, that's fast results. I know. I mean, in TV, in TV time, yeah, that's record. That's record time. So uh, it's very hard for you to know what people are describing. The people, it, there's a way that doctors describe skin lesions, and the people are not trained to describe. And even looking at them, there's always a judgment call with them. So there you go, Layla. What's up? Hi. Um. Well, I had a friend who got me into um, smoking crack cocaine, 
Mm -hmm. And um, I smoked it for about six months, and it didn't really seem to affect me much. I didn't ever get one of those mind-body highs that my friend always got. And he got to the point where he would routinely seize after smoking too much. He would have a seizure? Oh, yeah, full-blown grand mal seizures with his head rolled back, you know, his eyes rolled back in his head, and then the drooling and the shaking and all that. Has he seen a doctor about that? Oh, no, he's dead now. He died of polypharmacy because he was also a heroin addict, and they found a number of, oh. they found, like, methamphetamine and Klonopin and booze. He's and, just a drug, drug overdose. So. Yeah, he just... What's polypharmacy? Multi, uh, too many pharmaceuticals mul in it? Multi-drug overdose. Yeah. Poly meaning bird. Many. many. I mean bird. I mean many. Many. And uh, pharmacy, pharmacy meaning drugs. Right. Meaning far away. Many drugs. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so he's dead now, and, um, oh. but... My problem is that I never had much of a reaction until I relapsed. It was about a year ago, and I finally got one of the highs that he seemed to get, and um, it was just the most incredible thing I've ever felt. Um, it took a lot of dope to get me there, but I did get it, and then... Oh, but the point is, is you stuck with it, right? and you got the high. Right. And I, I think that should be applauded. <sighs> Well, Isn't it, Drew? Uh, I mean, we don't have that kind of uh, stick to itness in this country anymore. That's true. I Layla, have fortitude. Well, Layla, yeah, what's, bless the, you. what's the question? It's wonderful. Okay. So, um, as soon as I started to come down from the peak, I hit the pipe again because I didn't want to lose that edge. And right. my eyes started twitching back and forth very, very rapidly. I couldn't control it. And I thought I was going to die. I thought I was going to go into a seizure or have a stroke or do something awful. And um, it seemed like forever, but it finally stopped. And then um, I seemed to be fine. And then, you know, a few months went by. I've been having a real hard time getting off the drug, getting into my psychotropic meds because I'm um, bipolar. And that was mm. diagnosed after the drug episode and everything. But I noticed finally I was having kind of problems with my vision. Um, like if I'm tweezing my eyebrows or doing anything that requires detail close, that my eyes will kind of like have a problem focusing and then maybe they twitch or something. And I don't know if it's... Well, it, could be the, it could be the medication you're taking. Really? Depakote? Yeah. yeah. Depakote does that? Well, yes. <laughs> Look, uh, Layla, what, what is it exactly you're trying to figure out? Well, I, I don't know if I've damaged my eyes from this drug experience. No. You didn't. You you have a much more serious organ that you may have damaged your brain. You didn't damage your eyes. There's and, no uh, optical long term effect. Layla, are you concerned about your brain? It's a little more important. Right. A little more important. The, the bipolar illness, for instance, might be have been triggered by this or actually caused by it. Oh, it was pre existing. I found out later. You don't know that. Well, you it's don't a know family. That. It's a family history, and I was diagnosed with it a long time ago. But we really didn't think that it was. There and then we tracked the drug. Um, the drug use was in a manic phase. Right. We figured out that I went manic well, and then I went again. To the drug. the uh, eye issues do not sound like anything to be concerned with. There are some far greater concerns here in terms of what you've done to your brain chemistry uh, from this erratic use of cocaine. Uh, I hope you're in some form of recovery because the drug use will continue in all probability if you're not in some form of recovery. In rehab, Layla. Right no, I just quit cold turkey and I haven't used in over a year. Mm, all right. Well, you'll never use again. Yeah, again, in all probability, there's, there's, a, there's a high probability you'll, you'll use something again. So just please, please use some some supervision don't, involved 12 Don't days. have any kids. Do you have any kids? Well, I think the mom potted her down. Do Layla, we, you have any kids? Oh, absolutely not. That's Good. No, right no kids. The, I'm right with you on the Norplant thing, but... What, Good Dr. girl. Drew, what are you, what yeah. are you saying about my brain? I mean, I'm kind of worried by your tone and everything. Well, I, I'm just worried about brain chemistry being disturbed from that much cocaine. Maybe your mood disturbances being more substantial. Maybe you having kindled a seizure disorder of some type. Um, I, the point is, don't worry about your eyes. This is not an eye problem. Okay. Now, I mean, you may have had a dystonia or some problem with your eye movements from the cocaine but it's not something that's going to persist it's not an experience i've ever had okay getting a rehab i know you're you quit but you quit before too janice are we going to janice now yep janice is uh 15 janice what's going on 
Janice? She's, she's sleeping. Oh, do we hear her sleeping? Janice is sleeping. Janice has been on hold for 86 minutes, which uh, is just a tad under what I slept last night. <laughs> Except for, uh, thank God, I took like a six and a half hour nap today. That's why I feel, that's why I'm giddy tonight. All right, uh, Sherry will wake, wake up Janice because she, uh, she can wake the dead. I, we ought to send her to like uh, Abe Lincoln's grave. <laughs> It'd be nice to see him again. Sherry, wake his ass right up. Let's go to Lisa. Lisa is 19. Lisa. Hello? Hi. Hi. Um,. I just wanted to call and just see, because, like, I've been getting opinions from my friends and stuff like that, but it's not that good, and I don't know what to do. Um, I met this guy out here, and um, we just started dating, I guess, but he was from Mississippi. He was out here for about two months. And, um, mm -hmm. he, here is really far from Mississippi, isn't it, Drew? Could be. Yeah. Um... Yeah, it's about 1,800 miles. He told me that. Anyways, um... Maine? His name? Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. Yeah, she's probably Nova Scotia. <laughs> that or uh, Idaho? Mm, Seattle, I'm thinking. Um, San Francisco, Bay Area? What? Where do you live? Oh, where do I live? I live in Rancho Cucamonga. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. Yeah. All right, so he's out in Mississippi. Yeah. And um, he wants you to come out there with him? Yeah, he wants me to go out there. And he wants me to visit to see what it's like. Because ever since he left, he left back in May. Ever since he left, we've been talking. And, you know, we keep in touch and stuff like that. And uh, How long did you date him for? For about a month and a half. You're going to leave the state for somebody you've only knew for six weeks? Well, he just wants me to go and visit. It's like, you know, just to go on visit just for like a week or a couple of days or something like that. Mm -hmm. Is he living by himself? Um, no, he lives with his mom. And is, is that okay with her? Is it okay with her? Yeah, she wants me to go out there. How about your mom? Um, I don't think she... That, that's the whole problem. I don't know... And tell by Lisa's hushed tone that she's living with mom. Yeah. Well, I haven't told her... You know, she knows that I have a friend out there, but she doesn't know, you know, to what extent... You know. Well, I don't know to what extent yet. I don't understand. Well, you're 19. You can't tell your mom you've dated a guy? No, it's not that. It's just that he's so far away, and she would just be like, well, you know, he must be like somebody pretty special if you're going way out there to visit him, you know? I, mean, why? I don't understand the infatuation with him. I mean, you're not, you can't possibly maintain a relationship across that distance. It's, I mean, it's not like a relationship. It's just a friendship, and he wants me to go and visit I mean, I, I see it as a friendship, but he sees it as, you know, maybe something more. That's why he wants me to go out there. All right, hold on a second, Melissa. Let me talk to Drew. First off, when you're 19 and you've seen someone for six weeks, that can be just a kind of whirlwind thing. Yeah. And you can get really caught up in them and you can get really into them. And then if they send for you, you want to go see them. Now, yeah, I don't know why she's saying this is a friendship. I don't think she's being honest with herself. Maybe she thinks her mom's listening or something. But why would you even consider going somewhere when you looked at the relationship as a friendship and he looked at it as more than that? Why would you want to send him that message? And by the way, Mississippi is the rape capital of the United States. <laughs> the data just came in. His mom would uh, watch guard on a rocking chair smoking a pipe. Corn cob. Well, I mean, she may smoke one of those big <laughs> Sherlock Holmes <laughs> Sherlock Holmes pipes. I'm not sure, but it's one or the other. I haven't been able to picture it. But uh, obviously, this guy's going to want sex, and he thinks of it as more more than a friendly relationship. I don't know why Lisa, you would even entertain the notion of going out to see a guy you were only platonic with. While he was out here, we weren't. I mean, it wasn't friends. We were more than friends while he was out here. All right, so why do you look at the relationship as just friends? Because how how can I still be with him if I can't see him, you know? That's the point. Why? My thing is, why bother? Okay. Well, you just answered your own question. Why bother? I mean, you're not going to be able to maintain this relationship. Uh, he's going to be expecting sex when you go out there. It's not really what you're going to want to do. You're just going to be visiting. It's just... It's just 
Sounds like a messy, expensive, much to do about don't nothing. Get, don't, get, don't do it. Yeah. Don't get involved. Find a nice guy from uh, where you're at. And let me tell you something. I went to this Russian place for a few drinks a couple nights ago. Out here? Yeah, out here. Yeah. New York has Russian places. The thing about New York people, the, the artsy ones, yeah. their idea is, hey, uh, Russia, uh, people are ugly, food's horrible, economy sucks. But if they open a restaurant here, there's going to be a big line. Got to get some of that god-awful, overpriced Russian food. Yeah. It's not even goulash. It's just, the, you know, there's a potato with some vodka on it. <laughs> so we go to this Russian place. And all they have is caviar. Uh, and everyone's saying to me, eat the caviar. And I say, I don't like caviar. Uh, you know, there's only certain kinds of fish I like. I don't, I don't the fish eggs. It's it, it's fishy. Believe me. Yeah. Because your mouth thinks you just put a gill net worth of fish in your mouth. Yeah. You literally have uh, thousands of fish, potential fish in your mouth. <laughs> I'm for abortion, but I'm against uh, fish genocide. I don't like the idea of eating a whole brook full of fish on one cracker. So my friends are like, oh, eat it, you'll like it. And they do that same thing the Jews do with a liver. I don't know. Not the way my uh, uncle uh, Kaputza makes it. <laughs> now, here's what he does. He takes a tablespoon of liver and then seven head of lettuce, 14 boxes of Ritz, and uh, five large onions and a sack of sugar. And he puts the whole thing in a Cuisinart. Yeah. And then he spreads it on uh, uh, a piece of Melba toast the size of a trash can lid. No longer That's liver. good liver. It's no longer liver. That's delicious liver. Don't tell me you don't like liver until you've had Uncle Kaputz's liver. I'm like, yeah, but that's not liver, you idiot. That's right. a bunch of other stuff. And if they got rid of the liver, it'd be better. You wouldn't even notice it. Right. Yeah, yeah. anytime it's, you're, you're outweighed a 15 to 1 with the breadcrumbs than the liver. <laughs> it's, 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 it's no longer liver anymore. But anyway, they gave me the speech. Eat the... Eat the caviar. I said, I'm going to tell you why I'm not going to eat this caviar. A, I don't like it. I tasted it once, and it tastes too fishy. B, what if I do like it? Then I'm effed. You can't afford it? I mean, yeah. I'm saying, here's something. A, a dollop of the stuff is 18 bucks. Yeah. I'm going to get into this? No. I can get 70 foot of churro for the price I can get one dollop of this caviar and enjoy it more. And this is the same analogy I'm going to make to our last caller. What if you go to Mississippi and you really dig the guy? Right. Hey, you're screwed. Yeah, yeah. You're coming back home to live with your mom. That's He's right. living with his mom in Mississippi. You guys see each other once a year. You're miserable. Yeah. Don't even try it. You may like it. Yeah. Okay. Talk That's my you. philosophy in life, by the way. Jay, real quick before the break. Jay? Yeah, how's it going? Good. Uh, Adam, I think you'll appreciate this. All my, right. My girlfriend, is. she's extremely hot, but it does not matter what she eats. She has an incredible amount of gas. Mm -hmm. I mean, she can, it's like a tuba. She can, no. cl she can clear a room. She can clear a room. Like about two weeks ago, we had a little uh, uh, light, you know, light in a fart contest. Oh, no. It was like a flamethrower. I'm not kidding you. She almost lit me on fire. I'm not kidding you. It's funnier than hell. Really? I've never seen a woman do this. Well, I... I I mean, if I, I, I don't, I think it's, I'm attracted to it. It's hilarious. She has a great sense of humor, but I mean, she, He's like, it's potent. It is potent. He is like a moth to her flame. You that's can't right. keep away. Yep. Yeah, that's exciting. Listen, you know, as Drew will attest, I've lit and uh, lit and lighted many a fart, and Man. I never have a good vantage point. My mm. vantage point is I see the remnants after it clears the nuts, but I don't get to see. The origins of it. That's I don't get to see where it, where it an emanates. Animates. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get to see where it uh, emanates from. Yep. Drew, you get. We shut the light. Drew stands back. That's exciting. Wow, well, this is uh, this is quite a woman. Who was that, by the way? We we're talking to Jay. Oh, Jay. Yeah. All right. So, is this a problem, Jay? No, I just think it's. Uh, I just think it's. Uh, I think it's hilarious, and um, I thought you'd appreciate it. But I have. A, I had a. Uh, question for Drew, just a real quick one. Yeah. Um, I have a little burning sensation uh, when I urinate, and yeah. got too close to his girlfriend's ass. <laughs> and um, yeah, it also happens when I ejaculate. It started up about a week ago, and just like the tip of the penis, or is it all the way throughout? It's it's, all, it's throughout the shaft. It's kind of towards yeah. the top, but right. it goes away after about like maybe two minutes after after a urinate. But I've never okay. had it before, so I was kind of wondering what that would be. 
Well, is this is this a new girlfriend? Uh, yeah. Well, we you gotta get it about five months. Mm, you gotta get checked out. I mean, it's the the worst case scenario basically is that this is chlamydia. Maybe yeah. she picks something up at finishing school. She could have it. You, you never know. And not know. And it'd be important for her to know about that. There are other non chlamydial, non gonococcal, non specific urethritis you can get. Could be just a prostate inflammation. Could be sort of nothing. Just some sort of urethritis. God knows what. But uh, it's something it'd be a good idea for a doctor to check out. All right. Um, for Jay, for her sake, and even more so than yours, perhaps. Jay, what what attire does she light her farts in? Well, what, how does that, she how does she robe her? How does she? Yes, I mean she, she's not in a skirt, is she? No, no, it was blue jeans. It was blue jeans. But I'm not kidding. Yeah. Saying it was this 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 shot this flame that came out was not. I'm not kidding. It was about three feet. It was a good three feet. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow. The, the the great one is once in a while you get sort of the mushroom cloud. <laughs> it it looks like uh, like a fifty gallon oil drum just sort of caught on fire, and you were sort of in the distance a little bit, and you just sort of saw the ball come out, but it didn't seem to be propelled. You know what I mean? It was yeah. released. Yeah. No, it's like like a hydrogen balloon blowing up. <laughs> I saw you do one of those. Yeah, I did one of those. I like to break it up. I like to give the Batmobile flame. And then I like to give the right. uh, hydrogen balloon. Like the after three feet. That's right. Three feet. Like All a, right, Jay. Little... You're you're a lucky man. Not only is she beautiful, but she's talented. Three feet's like a like a space shuttle uh, liftoff. You know, I I think there's a little hyperbole uh, there. I don't think it. Uh, I mean, you've seen me. It's not three feet. It's not three it's, feet. It's Batmobile. And listen, I would I would pit my ass against her ass. I'll net. I'll never. Uh, no woman will take my my throne, my crown. I, I mean, understand. I, I can tell you to work at it. Okay, we're gonna take ourselves a break, and uh, we'll be right back with more love line, possibly more fart talk. Love line. I'm Adam Carolla. And that is Dr. Drew. Dr. Drew is the board certified one. I'm the guy who bought himself a little uh, blue movie today. What? Oh yes. What did you do? Oh, I got a uh, I got a VCR in my room. What did you do? Did you notice that? No. It's attached to the TV set. Can you see that on the top of your TV I did, set? I didn't pay attention. No. Oh, for Christ's sake. Notice. If I swear to God, if I go in your room and sure I see that there. thing... I'm sure it's there. How do you not know that you got a VCR? I haven't used the TV. You walk past it. Yeah. It's right at the foot of the bed. Yeah. I, I think I, as, you, as I picture, I think there was an extra sort of... It's got a mouth on the top yeah, of yeah, it. There might well be some up there. And the VCR remote is built into the TV remote. I see. The problem is, there's no fast forward. Oh, Adam. Anywhere? <sighs> Well, I got, I got to get up. Oh, but there's one up front there. Yeah, but it's it's dark. I don't know my way around. Where'd you go to buy this? I was just uh, down. Uh, I had uh, actually. <laughs> it's kind of funny. We we're trying to we we're trying to get John Stewart on this show for a while, yeah. and he's uh, sort of a friend. And uh, but the problem is, is the time difference out here. It's so damn late, and he works. Uh, he's going to be doing the daily show it's taking over for craig kilborn and right. he's pretty much like nine to five now at uh, comedy central right. over there but anyway we had dinner tonight and it was uh, he lives out in uh, greenwich village somewhere it takes nine to five to do that show he's taken over for the old guy i see uh, but, they gotta like re you know they gotta re staff things i see, they gotta, I see. like change the set and figure out what to I do see. with the five questions and all that kind of stuff right. i see okay uh, I know. Anyway, I had dinner with him, and I was out in Greenwich Village, and, uh, you know, I thought, man, I got that VCR. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, why why order one of those dirty pay-per-view movies for nine bucks? It's all it's all fuzzed out. You know, they, they, they edit those things, Drew. I know you don't know this. Cost you nine bucks. They edit the hell out of the thing. So. Yeah, for, for ten bucks, you get yourself a movie. And, it's not like you got to leave it at the airport either. You bring that home. Reminds you of your trip to New York. <laughs> hey, I remember when I was whacking off to that. So anyway, I bought one. The problem with Greenwich Village is nothing but gay porn. 
Oh. That's got to be the gay porn capital of the world, that Is Greenwich that right? Village. Nothing but the gay porn. Wow. Just uh, Colt Roundup and Duke and a lot of guys sitting on hay bales with straw hanging out of their mouth and their pants around their ankles. It's 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 really revolting. Listen, I don't mind the gay lifestyle, but I, the gay porn I find offensive. <laughs> And you know, I you know, I, I don't have sensibilities, but that stuff just that. kills me. I had to wade through uh, just like four hundred yards of gay porn to get to my big jug video. Oh, well, you got one of these? Thank God. And it's like it was you know right in between like mine. God, jeez, I don't even know if I can say that. <laughs> it's a good send up on the Hitler book, though. <laughs> Should I write it out for you there, Drew? I, I understand. Mine. Uh... Yeah, like the rooster. Yeah. Uh, but the point is, is I had to sort of reach in there with barbecue tongs and uh, slide it out. Got my movie. Do people recognize you when you're going up and buying these things? Mm, I don't care. I know you don't. I'm just curious. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, this, this, uh, they didn't seem like uh, the guys you're that would. such an ambassador for this program. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Adam Carolla just bought a big jug video. I, I should have uh, offered to put a picture up at the place. Oh. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, anyway, so uh, now I got that, and that's why we got to end the show now. <laughs> <laughs> I got to get home to that. It's, it's, you know what I mean? Because here's the thing about I'm not used to buying pornography. That's One of the perks of the business is people send me tapes, they give me stuff, stuff lying around. You know, God knows this uh, engineer Mike pulls up uh, more crap on the computer than Bill Gates. Yank that stuff up, puts it on a cassette. I got, you know, you get hold of stuff, and then you collect and trade. <laughs> But I, this thing cost me like 19 bucks. Oh, wow. And the way I look at it is, well, actually, yeah, it, now it's 19 bucks a, a whack, a What's pop. You understand? <laughs> but I get another one off, and it goes down to nine. I see. 99 So you got to really hone your... Hone uh, your... And I get another one, it keeps splitting. Yeah, you you see what I mean? Worth By the time okay. I'm done, it's a nickel a, a whack. You a see pop. what I mean? I get you. Uh, right, so What's I this get on that. What's it called? Jeez, I, I, you know, I, it was like uh, guys who love jugs or something. They, they, they didn't get real clever. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. Let's go to line one. All right. You want to borrow that? It's a long road trip. Line one. Hello. Carrie. Hi, Carrie. Hi, I was calling. Um, I was diagnosed with borderline personality disorder a couple years ago. Mm. And um, since then, I went into residential treatment and was on medications and stuff like that. Um, I left residential and took myself off the meds. Um, I've been struggling with it severely for the last six months, and um, I go through, you know, our insurance, and they just want to keep passing me off and making me go through drug treatment and want to blame all my problems on that. And on the drug, on the chemical dependency. Yeah, basically, you know, give me a dual diagnosis, I and I'm uh, not wanting to treat the borderline personality disorder, saying that it's not. It's treatable. so interesting how they've they've sort of turned tail on all that. They, I, I've noticed that too, Carrie. That a lot of insurance companies are or sort of pigeonholing people into addiction treatment when there clearly are dual issues. Yeah. Um, dual meaning to a, diagno a, a psychiatric diagnosis and a chemical dependency issue. So it's like a, you're, uh, you're hooked on drugs and you have manic depression. Well, exactly. That would be a, a common dual combination. But Carrie's got a little more troubling combination, which is a personality disorder. Were you sexually abused when you were younger or something, Carrie? Yeah. And, and that's a good way. It's a, it's a common way to come out with a borderline disorder. And so it's a difficult way to live. You're talking, I mean, we talk about chaos in this show. Borderlines, that's chaos. Yeah. yeah. You split, your personality splits off because... No, 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 no. no. It's, borderline is, is different, but it, it's it's a narcissistic type of disorder. It's a common one these days. Now, what what famous celebrities or uh, politicians are borderline besides Clinton? A lot Clinton, of them. Let's say. Clinton's not a borderline, but they're, it tends to reflect females more than males. Ooh. And, and there's a lot of borderlines out there. Sharon Stone. They say that. Yeah, I'd say she's borderline. Yeah, I, it, all the nutty broads who make a lot of money, borderline. What's that, Carrie? They said that I was more, I um, was like predisposed in the womb because I was also given up for adoption at birth yeah. and had attachment problems as a child. Yeah, oh my. And, and so that, now you're in it's a, some sort of residential setting? I'm not now. I'm living back with my adoptive parents. Okay. Um, what what's your question exactly for us? Um, is there is there a way to treat it? I mean, because I mean, I, I mean, I suffer with it so severely. I mean, I have. I, I mean, on a day. I know, Carrie. Okay. Yeah, I know. It's got to be miserable. But I, I've I have talked to a psychiatrist who felt that it was not a curable disorder. It is certainly a 
a manageable disorder, and people with it tend to settle down as they get older. Particularly third and fourth decades of life, things get a lot better. Uh, obviously, talk therapy, regular regular therapy, where the focus is on containment, uh, can help. Why do they call it borderline? Uh, I'm not sure where they came up with the name. It's a little bit misleading. It is. It, it used to apply to a term that was uh, borderline psychotic. Is sort of what the term used to apply to. Well, it's it, it, it sort of uh, says that you're you could be worse. <laughs> you're on the border. You, uh, you could be in Tijuana. Yeah. But you're just hanging around uh, the border. Yeah, I don't know where it came from. Okay. But it's bad. It's a tough one. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Why don't we uh, sell one of these calls before we go to break? Let's here, take one Drew. more. One more. All right. Uh, if you mm -hmm. hadn't uh, waxed on about your porn collection for so long at the top, uh, we could have uh, taken three or four calls. Troy, what's going on? Online six. Yeah, Troy. Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey. Um, I have a question for you. Um, mm -hmm. I've noticed in the past in your um, broadcast at Edison in Portland, Oregon, about uh, Klonopin. Mm hmm And I take a very low dosage of 0 0.5 milligram. Mm hmm And I'm also an um, Alzheimer's specialist. I work in, uh, for legacy like, uh, health systems. For and, Alzheimer's? Yeah. And uh -huh. so I get beaten up and slapped every day. So I know how that goes. Um, about the, de the demented patients who are violent. Oh, boy. Uh, Oh, oh yeah. really? Uh, they they don't know who's coming at them. Oh yeah, sometimes they can be real impulsive. Very. You never hear about that. Oh, it's, <laughs> mm, oh yeah, it's common. Is that Alzheimer's? In, in more well, any dementia. It's, it's certain. There are different features of dementia. Yeah, and one of them can be really labile. The, yeah. The steps of levels. I mean, you know, like oh, step, poor step. Troy's got to kick some eighty-year-old ass. No, I, uh, every other day. The eighty-year-old ass that kicks mine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Boy, they're strong too, huh? Uh, my question is, is I've okay. Uh, why I brought up the colonopin, and, and my question is, is I've been in a relationship for almost about four years now. Um, the woman that I was uh, going out with um, has a son, uh, a father. Uh, the father is sort of a flake, and I got out of the medical profession, became an underwater welder. Uh, it's marine for a good company here in Portland, Oregon, and I co-work in Alaska. And this woman... Um, Same business, really, isn't it? Uh, working with the elderly, underwater <laughs> welding. Uh, well, very closely this, aligned. Closely, yeah. this, is the, this is the kicker. <laughs> the kicker is, is that I did this all for her. Okay? Mm. Um, I'm a man with many talents. Uh, I got screwed over by this lady. Um, she just moved out of our apart my apartment and left me with nothing, took all my furniture, and I didn't hear for her for four months. And then she calls up, and I'm really close with her grandmother, and I'm a landscaper too, and I uh, build ponds. So I build her grandmother a pond, and she comes over. And the first thing that my ex-girlfriend does is come up and hug me and kiss me, gives me a kiss, just poof. And I'm going to myself, what, in my mind going, what is this for? Of course, Hold on a second. Hold on a second there, Troy. Had to take that last call, didn't she, Drew? I had to squeeze in that last one. We could have been doing the swords thing at the urinal right now. <laughs> hey, Troy, yeah. don't take offense to this, but we got to take a break. You got it, buddy. You're, you're running the show into the ground. Now, here's what I want you to do. Work out what the question is, and when we come back, hit us with it. And then I got a few questions about underwater welding. Uh -huh. I wanted to get into that when you I was did? younger. Why? Why? Because they, they got paid like 80 bucks an hour. Wow. He went uh, uh, eight bucks an hour to clean carpets with Everlasting, uh, the felon from New York, or you want eighty bucks an hour to uh, patch a hole in the, the side of a, a freighter? Exxon Valdez, yeah, perfect. Yeah. All right, we'll be back with more Love Line. The phone number for Love Line is one eight hundred Love One Nine One. Love Line, I'll be right back. Love line. Forget about the phone number. Forget about the fax number. And when we left off, we were speaking to Troy. Troy's 26. 
Troy's got a lot of irons in the fire, this Troy. All right, Troy, what's the he's question? He's a true renaissance man. Indeed. And he's a nice guy, this Troy. <laughs> but we got to get to the question part. You you, you had an old girlfriend that took some furniture and... Yeah, the, the whole the whole question it comes down to this is that the, the, the lady that I broke up with, um, or she left me, I'll just say it that way. She, she just left, bailed out, uh, took my furniture, went through the police thing. I didn't have enough courage to do a civil suit because I love her that much not to do that. And I make enough money to um, not have to worry about Ethan Allen and all that crap. It doesn't really matter to me. It's only material. Don't take, you don't take it when you go. That's What's the question? Troy. Yeah. Troy, you got to stop the sidebars here. Okay, buddy. In the sort of <laughs> what is the question? Half-baked welder's philosophy about not taking it when you go. <laughs> and just get right to the question. Okay. Um, she's calling on my um, pager. Um, and I have a secretarial number that you can reach me. And she doesn't use that, but she's calling on my pager and she's playing these songs and she's saying that she loves me and all this stuff, right? And I think it's the real thing. I care about the child, you know. Even though it's not mine, I accept it as it is. Does she have the child with her still? Uh, um, it, she has it with her um, ex-boyfriend uh, on and off. And uh, you've not been having... One week off type thing. And, and you've not had any uh, contact with the child? Huh? Is and you've not had any contact? I don't have custody. No, I'm not involved. You've had not any contact with the child since she left. Um, I did about a month and a half ago. She let me see the kid. The kid looks at me and runs up to me and hugs me like in a death grip, like I was Christmas. You know, it's an yeah. ext extreme thing. It was really intense, and she started crying. Okay. Yeah. And I pay, uh, you know, I paid her five hundred dollars. She owed some money. Um, got her out of debt, and I. Uh, All right, hold on, Troy. Yeah. This is uh, the word. Of sanity, chiming in here for a second. This chick's a little nutty. She's done. She's done I don't know lot. why. Why you're so in love with her? Why are you so attached to her? I'll tell you she why. Stole your. She's why? Play, she's playing his day, and I've modeled for Eileen Ford. I've done a lot of things for Men Health magazine, and um, I just there's it's like a, a soulmate. It's something that you can't explain. You just have to be in that position to do it. And Troy, that's a lot of nonsense. That's crap. Well, who are you, who are you like kidding crap. here? I'm not joking. Yeah, it sounds like total crap. It sounds all right. But why does your soulmate steal your furniture? Um, Listen, I, I, I haven't. Uh, I'm, I'm no expert on soulmates, but they don't steal furniture. That I know. Now, here's the deal. I think I think she's done. The, the girlfriend. Don't, do not fall for this crap. This is this is. Remember the borderline situation we were talking about earlier. This is borderline behavior. Yeah. But the girl, the little girl. I'm surprised I mean, she's got a kid and, uh, with another guy. And, imagine uh, that. Uh, Shocking. I wonder but, why that one didn't work. But I, I got to admire Troy. Another for soulmate. Somewhere else. Oh. Imagine that. How many soulmates can you have? Well, yeah. Like, can a cat hey, have hey, nine hey, soulmates? The, you can't hold me down, man. <laughs> All right. I got as many as I want. Sorry, brother. Um, the little girl. I mean, thank God Troy understands that she needs a consistent relationship, and certainly with a, a male over time. If there's any way that Troy can maintain that relationship but not get too involved with the girl, with the, with the ex-girlfriend, I, I would strongly support him doing it. I mean, the little girl really, really is going to need him. And the, just being another guy that comes and goes mm -hmm. uh, is cultivating another mom. All right. I, you know, I know he busted Troy's balls a little bit. I hope he uh, understood it and, uh, and took it in the spirit in which it was intended. Although, <laughs> I really didn't care. There wasn't much spirit behind it. But the, here's what I'm saying. Uh, Troy's attached to this chick, and it's a little weird. Yep. And Troy's got something going on with him. And I don't know what went on with Mama, and uh, I don't know what went on with Troy. But Troy's way too into this chick, and this chick's a little bit nutty. And that whole soulmate thing, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's, it's just an excuse. It's an excuse. And you know why it, it, it's an excuse? Because once you're soulmates, the person can do anything. They can try to kill you. They can steal your furniture. They can break up with you. They can play nutty songs on your uh, on your uh, pager. It doesn't matter. Not soulmates. You're soulmates. It's just another just kind all of, through their soulmates. It's another kind of attraction, which is always sick. I've had ten soulmates. They're all gone. I got a new soulmate. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Let's go line two. This is Paul. Paul, what's up? Hey, this is Paul. Uh, Paul's yeah, 39. Yeah. I got a problem at work. Uh, well, I'm bipolar. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of guys um, kind of accuse me of being... Paul's got a pole mate. Of right. uh, amphetamines at times when I can be manic. See, 
sometimes I don't like to take my lithium because I like to be a manic, you know. Yeah, bipolar bipolar patients frequently miss their manias, and it's hard to get them to stay with their pharmacological therapy because of that. But know that stimulant dependency and mania or hypomania look identical. There's no way to tell them apart, which is why we usually try to, as a matter of rule of thumb, avoid rendering a diagnosis on a drug addict until they've been sober, abstinent for many months. True. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question. What is hypo? Cause just beneath. Okay, so hypomania. It's almost man manic. Is almost manic. Yeah. You see, I always think hypo and hyper. Yeah. And hyper when I hear above, so, hypo is below. Right. When I hear someone say hypomania, to me it sounds to me like, oh, they're, they're, they're completely spinning out of control. Hypermania, like, yeah. Right. It, it's, it's like, it, it's like um, push and pull starting with the same two letters. It's a bad plan. See, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but everything. You got a head of hey, steam. You're man, heading for the man. door. Push and pull should not start with the same two goddamn letters. I I, in medicine, hyperthyroid, hypothyroid, hyperparathyroid, hypoparathyroid. Know, let's redo that. Hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia. It's just that's just the way it is. It, one of them means less, and one of them means a ton. Yep. And they're real close. Mm -hmm. All right, I, I just don't like that. Let's go to uh, Chris. All right, so what did you tell him to do? Take his meds. But don't you think I'm right about push and pull? Yeah. Couldn't we come up with uh, words that were just as, a little bit different for the door? How many times you yanked on that thing and had everyone in the store turn and look at you outside yanking on the door when you should have pushed on it? It's not because they looked, they looked like push. It's because I wouldn't pay attention. Yeah, but you see the P and the U. Yeah. If one of them started with an X, you'd never make that mistake, would you? Yeah. I just don't pay attention. No, you know I'm right on this one. Chris, what's going on? Hello. Um, Hi. I just broke up with my boyfriend. Well, we've been together for three years. We have an 18-month-old daughter. Um, about seven months ago, we moved to Utah. Um, we're originally from Illinois, and uh, things aren't working out, so we broke up. And he decided to just, like, run away. And um, he, we thought that it would be better if, you know, he would take my daughter back home to see my mom and everything, and she can stay with him. But he's really insecure and everything, and he's afraid that when I come back that I'm going to be with somebody else, but I'm not. And he's, I don't know, he's really controlling. So he's How old like, is he? He's 22 and I'm 18. Yeah. Hey, did you say he got married or just boyfriend? No, no, no way. We're just boyfriend and girlfriend. Oh, no, yeah. no, no. Marriage, not the commitment. Yeah. The kid, yeah. yeah. I mean, well, like I said, kids grow up, they go to college, you blink your eyes. Uh, oh my God. I mean, we're taking care of themselves. Civil to each hmm? other for our daughter, but, you know. Sure. Well, what is the question exactly, Chris? I'm unclear. Um, I mean, how can I explain to him that when I'm ready to date somebody else, for him to not be so insecure and jealous? You know what There's I mean? There's no way you can tell him. Yeah. There's no way it's, he's going to be insecure and jealous no matter what. Right. But, all right. He doesn't seem to think you guys are broken up, though, does he? Right. Well, see, he's got a mental problem because he, like, always tries to kill himself when I would try to break up with him. Oh, um, so I went through a lot of emotional stress with him. It was a lot hey, of emotion. Okay. Hey, Chris, what's up with your parents? With my parents? My parents were never together. I mean, I know my dad. He's, he's a uh. jerk. My mom's uh -huh. cool. She's my best friend in my whole world. She, so. And she was, well, she's got to be. She's the only one around. She was, your dad was never around when my you were growing dad, up? Yeah, he he was, but he, like, beat me all the time. He's That's a jerk. Not, all right. See? Okay. You guys don't like the Norplant plan. No, this is I what we started the show f with. <laughs> Chris, you would have been when first in line for had the Norplant. I what? I had Norplant. Okay. Oh, I my had God. What happened? It got infected. And so... He took it, um, he took it out. Who my put doctor, the Norplant in you? My doctor. He, I don't know. It was something wrong. I have the scar. I had it in for three months, and they had to take it out. Oh. I was going to be smart. <laughs> we were so close. Who put it? Why did he put it in you? Um, I mean, I you asked it. for it? I well, wanted Chris it gets in. FDIC just for... For birth control. Yeah. Good me, good man. You make an effort. Yeah. It's like showing a, a, a pay stub. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like, you know when you bring your report card to the church and it's all A's and uh, you get like an extra wafer or something, or, you know, down to the uh, malt shop and you get like a smoothie or a sundae or something. Yeah. You bring the expired Norplan in and we'll still cut you a check. Right, we got to go We break. appreciate that uh, effort. So you had the Norplan in and you took the Norplan out. 
Yep. And then what'd you do? We put her on hold so we go to break. All right. But then the goofball got pregnant. I know. Okay. All right. Uh, he, the guy, the boyfriend's going to be insecure and jealous no matter what. He clearly has some instability. You cannot be responsible for him. If he starts threatening to hurt himself, call the appropriate authorities. And, and let tell him you're break. broken up if you're broken up. Yes. He doesn't seem to think you are. Yeah. All right. We'll be back. Dr. Drew and Adam Carolla. We'll be right back. That is about it for Love Line. I want to thank Ann. I want to thank Mike. I want to thank Sherry. And I want to thank Jim. Jim, for especially here. for changing our mics. Jim changed our mics and our minds about this fabulous Westwood One New York experience. We didn't complain, did we? No. We'll have to do extra complaining tomorrow. All right. All right. So, thank you all. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. Mommy! <laughs> this is in Love Line. The views expressed on Loveline are not necessarily those of the staff, the management, or the sponsors of this radio station. And are probably not the views of Westwood One Entertainment. Loveline is produced by Ann Wilkins Engel. Now, please listen to this station longer.